Cristo. Look at somebody and say manifest. Look at somebody and say manifest. Look at somebody and tell them it shall be. It shall be. Not only do I decree it, but God has decreed it. God has spoken it, and it shall come to pass. There's not a devil in hell that can prevent the will of God from coming to pass in the life of the man or the woman who says amen to him. If you say your will be done, it shall be done. That doesn't mean the devil won't fight you. That doesn't mean the devil won't attack you. But hallelujah, there's no weapon. Look at somebody and tell them no weapon that formed against me that can prosper. Every tongue that rises against me, God gonna condemn it. Come on and look at somebody and tell them it shall be. Now put your hands together and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 God's got a purpose. God's got a purpose for your life. You might as well quit dilly-dallying. You might as well quit messing around. You might as well quit getting distracted and let the will of God come to pass in your life. It's better than you've imagined. It's better than you can desire. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask and all that you think. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together and bless the Lord. Bill Miller, you always have a way of messing me up. How many of you know God is good? Y'all give me a minute to get myself together. Give me a minute to compose myself. I gotta, I gotta collect my thoughts. He's worthy, isn't he? Isn't he worthy? How somebody said it this way, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. The vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, for it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold his soul which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just, point to yourself and say the just, shall live by faith, manifest. Hallelujah. Let's go to Philippians. Hallelujah. Let's go to Philippians. Chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, reading from the New King James translation of the Bible. If you wouldn't mind standing with me, I'm going to give you glad to be here today on this first Sunday of the new year. How many of you crossed over from 2015 to 2016 expecting God to do three things for your life? How many of you are expecting a breakthrough? Holly, how many of you, you've been praying over stuff and believing for stuff? And sometimes you got tired of waiting and then you came back to it a little bit later because the Lord wouldn't let it rest in you? Hallelujah. Say, this is my year. Say, this is my year. Say, thank you, Lord. This is my year. Come on and put your hands together and bless God, because this is your year. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Paul is speaking. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting those negative things that happened in 2015. Forgetting all the mess and all the drama that I've been through. And reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal or the mark, if you're looking at the King James Version, for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Go ahead and take your seats. Amen. Go ahead and take your seats. I see we have some people in here who are cross-generational. And some of you who have been around for more than 30, 35 years or so will remember a, guy, a, a R&B artist by the name of Teddy Pendergrass. Y'all remember Teddy Pendergrass? Yeah. 
Teddy Pendergrass had a, one of his hits, one of his many hits, was called Love TKO. Y'all remember that one? Some of y'all clapping on that one. You like that one, huh? <laughs> this was found on the album that was entitled by his initials, TP. And it was released in 1980. And when you follow the stats for it, it reached number two on Billboard's R&B chart. And it reached number four on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. And some of the, let me just go over some of the words for you, if you remember. He says, looking back over my years, I guess I've shedded some tears. We're going to have Bill come up and sing it in a minute. <laughs> Told myself time and time again, this time I'm going to win. But another fight, things ain't right, I'm losing again. He says it takes a fool to lose twice and start all over again. And y'all know the hook, right? <laughs> Think I'm going to let it go. Remember he said that? Because it looks like another love. All right, hallelujah. And then he repeated that. He said it one more time. He says, Think I'm going to Because it looks like another love. Y'all remember that song. Now, there are some parallelisms with what Teddy is recounting in that particular song and what Paul is talking about here in this Philippians text. Paul says, I count not myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward toward those things which are ahead. Teddy said, I think I better let it go. Looks like another love TKO. For today's message, I want to speak this topic. I think I better let it go. Hashtag, look for another God TKO. Yeah. Come on, saints, let's praise your hands. Put your hands together and praise him. Look for God to give you a TKO. Now, Teddy Pendergrass's Love TKO is a song that discusses and talks about and recounts a man's difficulties in finding a lasting love. Amen. He reflects on past mistakes, heartbreaks, mishaps, and some of his love relationships. And he comes to the realization that I can't stay or linger in the past. I can't stay in the dump. I can't continue to walk around with this weight on my shoulders. I have to let it go and move on. Some of you have had experiences and encounters over the last several years where someone has disappointed you, where people have hurt you, where folk have let you down. Some, in some cases, it's you let yourself down. Sometimes we're beating our own selves up because of past mistakes and failures that we've made. Sometimes we wish we had a, a do-over. Y'all know what a do-over is? <laughs> Oftentimes, especially as we get older and older, you hear us talk more and more. If I was 20 again, <laughs> right? If I could just go back to 25. Some of them young folk back there thinking, that's old, that's old. <laughs> but if we had an opportunity to correct some things, and sometimes we can find ourselves getting stuck based upon the things of the past. But how many of you know today that it is not good to dwell in the negativity of the past? The negativity of your past can kill you. It can kill your dreams. It can kill your hopes. It can kill your joy. The negativity of the past can kill your trust. It can kill your perspective, your ambition. And if you're not careful, it can kill you physically. It can kill your body. There are folk who are suffering from sicknesses and diseases that can be directly traced right back to some negativity, some unforgiveness, some arts that they have against other folk. Somebody might have done you wrong 50 years ago, and you're still carrying that around today. But today I want you to let it go and count that thing as another God TKO. Do you realize that you can block the plan of God 
the very plan that God has for your life, you can block it by holding on to something that you need to let go of. You can sabotage your own blessings because you're waddling around in the mud of the things of the past. You could be stuck in the mire and paralyzed from receiving God's best for your life because you are carrying around baggage that you need to let go of. Look at somebody and tell them, I think I'm going to let it go. The old folk used to say it this way, let go and what? Let God. Come on and put your hands together and give God praise. Over in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18, the scripture says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. See what he says here? God says, do not remember the former things. Because the former things can keep you bound up. The former things can twist and tie you up. The former things can can mess you up where you don't believe God and where you don't believe God's will is for you to do well. The former things can cause you to believe that it's God's will for you to suffer, God's will for you to go through, God's will for people to attack you, God's will for you to be just always on the bottom trying to find your way out. But how many of you know that's contrary to the scripture? That is not God's will for you. But in order for you to get up and get out and get your deliverance, sometimes you've got to forget those things of the past. He says, do not remember, do not dwell in the things of the past, the former things, and do not consider or cause the the other things to continue to mold over and to, to rehearse them over and over again in your mind. In this passage of scripture, he's telling us to stop thinking about it, stop moping about it, stop rehearsing it, stop dwelling in it, and put it behind you. Let go of those things of the past so that God can take you to the next level. I think I better let it go. Now, why do we need to let go of the past? Let's let's look at that for a minute. Why should we let go of the past? Well, number one, holding on to the past can paralyze you and keep you from moving forward in God. Holding on to the past can paralyze you and keep you from moving forward in God. Y'all remember Moses? Some of y'all Bible scholars, y'all remember Moses, right? Moses had the favor of God on his life. When he was born. The Pharaoh had sent out a decree that everybody, every male child, two years of age and under, was going to be slaughtered. The favor of God was so on his on Moses' life that God gave his mother a, 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 a some type of scientific wonder, right? Made it made her made her an engineer. She put together this ark, put the baby out on the on the river. Said, "Lord, I'm putting them in your hands." And look how God worked this thing out. The Pharaoh's daughter rescued the baby out of the water. And not only did the Pharaoh's daughter rescue the baby out of the water, then the, bro- the baby's sister, Miriam, happened to be there and went to the Pharaoh's daughter and said, would you like for me to go find a nurse to care for this baby for you? And then the Pharaoh's daughter said, okay, that sounds good to me. And then Miriam went and got the boy's mother. (laughs) That's the God you serve. She put her baby out there in God's hands, and God brought the baby back to her and allowed her to rear her babies in the Pharaoh's castle. So this is what Moses came from. But then Moses, you know, he grew up in the palace, grew up with the best of everything, grew up being prepared to be the next king of of, um, uh, Egypt got into a situation where he saw an Egyptian and a, and a Hebrew guy fighting, and he got in the middle of it and killed the Egyptian, trying to be a rescuer and a deliverer for the people, and that all backfired because the next day somebody mentioned it, and he went running. And so for 40 years, he's out now in the wilderness, moping and crying and mad at God because of what has become him. And that's some of us sitting in here today. You know that the favor of God is on your life. 
You know what God has done for you in the past. You've got a testimony. You know when you think back and talk about the things that God has brought you through, the things that God has done for you, the miracles that God has worked on your life, and you let some trial and some situation get in between you and the God you serve, that devil is a liar. You cannot allow the failures the things that you don't understand that you've encountered in your past to hinder you and to upset and paralyze your walk with God. Number two, why do we need to let go of the things of the past? Because holding on to the past can smother your faith and cause you to lose sight of God. It can smother your faith and cause you to lose sight of God. Now, the children of Israel, they were slaves, right? God brought them out with a mighty hand. God brought them out with a stretched out arm. The Bible says before they went out, God told them to go and spoil the Egyptians. What that means? That means they were able to go and get stuff from the Egyptians, and they left. E Egypt was a rich nation. But when Israel left Egypt, Egypt had nothing because God caused Egypt to transfer their, all of their wealth over to God's people, the Israelites. So God opened up a red sea for them, caused them to walk across on dry ground. God took them through and fed them with manna. Hallelujah. God brought water up out of a rock whenever they got thirsty. And from time and time again, they would begin to complain and they would begin to murmur. Now, how can you come out of that kind of stuff and start complaining? How can you come out of that type of stuff and start murmuring against God? They had the audacity to open up their mouths and say, it was better for us when we were back in Egypt. Y'all know how we complain. My feet hurt. It ain't supposed to take no 40 years for me to get over there. What's up with you, Moses? Why are you taking us the scenic route? We should have been there in two weeks. Six weeks at the most. And you got us wandering around in circles. I know we saw that tree last week. You got us wandering around in circles. And I don't know what's going on with you anyway. Talk about you up there having some type of thing, getting something from God. You know you made those laws up yourself because you just want to be a ruler over us. And they began to complain and they began to murmur. And, they began, and because of the complaining and murmuring, they lost sight of what God had done for them. They lost sight of the blessings of God. They lost sight of the miracles of God. You got to check yourself, somebody said, before you wreck yourself. I don't care what happened in this church in 2015. God is still God. Can I stay here for a minute? Some of y'all need to let all that stuff that y'all rehearse from week to week to week and get on Facebook and get on the phone and go here and there talking about, you need to let it go. And instead of concentrating and focusing on what somebody did to disappoint you, you need to concentrate on what God did to bring you out. Number three. Why do we have to let go of the things of the past? Because holding on to the past can short circuit the anointing of God in your life. It can stop the power of God from flowing in your life. Now, I hear people get up and say this all the time. You know, well, the Lord can do anything but fail. That's a wonderful religious thought. It makes for good conversation. It sounds good in a song, but it ain't true. So y'all don't like me now. That's blasphemy. That's blasphemy. How, how he going to get up and say that? I'll take you to the scripture. Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 5 from the New American Standard Bible. Let me just read this to you for a minute. Jesus went out from there and came. Who are we talking about? Jesus, right? All right. Came into his own hometown, and the disciples followed him. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and the many listeners were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things? And what is this wisdom given to him? And such miracles as these performed by his hands. Is not this the... Now to get an attitude. Okay, look at the attitude. Is not this 
the carpenter, the son of Mary. Y'all know, no, let me just say this. Now, you believe in the virgin birth. But if you was back there, you didn't believe in no virgin birth. You said that one was fast. Talk about some miraculous conception. They didn't believe that no more than a man in the moon. You believe it because you've been transformed. They didn't believe it at all. The son of Mary and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon are not his sisters here with us? And they took, look at what it says here. They took offense at him. So now look, they got offended and look what happened. Look at verse 4. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his own relatives and in his own household. And I'm trying to get to verse 5. And he could not, he could do no miracles there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. That's the word. God can do anything but fail. He can't do anything if you don't get in agreement with him. That's why the Bible says amen. Who wrote this song? Let the church say amen. The reason why we're saying amen is we're saying I'm getting into agreement with what you say, God. Not my will, but your will be done. Because God and me, if I get in line with God, if you get in line with God, if this church gets in line with God, there's nothing that can be restrained from us. And that's why the devil sent somebody to murmur. That's why the devil sent somebody to oppose. That's why the devil sent somebody to be on the opposite side. So because he knows if I can sow confusion, if I can sow strife, if I can get the people out of one, one accord, nothing can be done for them. But that devil is a liar. We know the word of God, and it shall be done in this house. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. So back over in Isaiah again, chapter 43, verse 18, it says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. I think I better let it go and look for another God, TKO. Now, let me go to this. Let me go to this as I come to a close. We have crossed over from 2015 to 2016. Pastor Charlie brought us in here the other night, and I'm telling you, we, we, we crossed it over. We, took, we got rid of 2015, and we brought in 2016, rejoicing. And I speak that word over faith, faith fellowship. 2015 is gone. 2014 is gone. The last four years are gone. The last eight years are gone. Everything that's negative that has happened to this church is gone. But God is using all of it to work in us that which is glorious in his sight. What the devil means for evil, God means it for good. God can take every pain. God can take every, all the misery. God can take all of the hurt and turn that stuff around and bless you beyond measure. But you've got to look for him to do it. This is the year of Jubilee. Somebody say Jubilee. This is the year of Jubilee. Now let me say this. Jubilee is, uh, uh, it's, it comes around once every 50 years. If you go to the Le Leviticus 25 and do that at your own time, we're not going to do that right now. But in Leviticus, Leviticus 25, the Bible speaks of the year of Jubilee. It comes around only once every 50 years. It's a time of release. Everybody say release. It's a time of restoration. Everybody say restoration. It's a time of return. Everybody say return. And it's a time of abundant favor. In the year of Jubilee, property had to be restored. Some stuff that you lost. You know you didn't pay that bill and they came and got that car? Property has to be restored. In the year of Jubilee, losses have to be returned. In the year of Jubilee, slaves had to be set free. In the year of Jubilee, debts had to be forgiven. In the year of Jubilee, the favor of God, hallelujah, was manifested on the people of God. That's the year that we are in right now. But just like with everything that goes on with God, you've got to come into agreement with his word. You've got to stop fighting with God and stop arguing with God. You know, I don't debate the word of God. I don't fight the word of God. I don't resist the word of God. If God said it, whether I like it or not, I need to get myself in accord with it. And that's what we need to learn how to do if we are going to walk in the victory of God. Some of us spend so much time trying to reason it and fight it and wrestle with it. Well, I don't like this. 
and said, I have to do that. And then we try to hide behind some concepts and take them out of context. For example, we'll take grace, the notion of grace out of context, and try to use it to do every old dirty thing that we want to do. But that devil is a liar. Grace is not meant to be a bungee cord. It's meant to be, hallelujah, a safety net. The purpose of grace is if you slip into trouble. Grace is not there if you jump into trouble. Stop fighting God. Stop resisting God. Believe God. How to line our lives up according to his word and watch him bless us. God wants to bless us. We were created in the image of God. You are special to him. You are glory to God. You are sanctified. He has set you apart. I hope I can finish this message without running off of the stage. Some of you ladies, I'm looking at y'all now. Y'all all adorned beautifully. And you dress up. And some of you put on your, you know, your makeup and your different jewelry. And there are some special occasions that you have special accessories for, right? If, if you're planning on doing something that's a really big deal to you, celebrate your anniversary, for example. In some of your cases, you might say, well, I'm celebrating the release from that anniversary. <laughs> but that's when you bring out the special stuff, right? That's, that's when you bring out the expensive stuff. Because what you're getting ready to get involved in is special, it's significant, it's important, it's not ordinary. And so those jewels, for example, that, you, that are special to you, you don't put those... You know how the everyday stuff, some of y'all going to go home today and take off your earrings and take off your necklace and throw it on the thing, right? And if you find it next week, fine. If you don't find it, so what? You don't really care about it because that's not important to you. It was $2.99, so I'll just go get another one. But then there's some heirlooms that you have that were passed down from your great-great-grandmother. There's some important things that you have because some, your husband gave this to you back before y'all, while y'all was dating and so on, and this is important to you. Or, there, or he might have upsized your ring because y'all been together for 30 years. Whatever it was, but there are some things that you have are, that are significant to you. And those things, you don't take them and toss them on, the, on top of the bureau. Those things, you have a, a, a chest that you store them in. And you make sure that they don't get tangled up. You make sure that it doesn't get messed up because it's significant to you. It's sanctified. You've set it apart from the ordinary stuff. You are sanctified by God. You are not ordinary. You are extraordinary. You mean something to him. He loves you with all of his heart. He loves you with an everlasting love. You are significant and important to him. And, man, he, and he treats you as such. But in order for you to cause that thing to manifest, the blessings that God has for you, in order for them to manifest, you've got to do what God says to do. You've got to, for one thing, like we're talking about today, let go of that stuff of the past. I know he hurt you. Left you with all those children. That's all right. God can still take care of you. Won't he do it? To... Somebody here has a testimony. That man might have left me hanging, but God saw me through. In other cases, you might have been in a situation where the, devils had, where the, the doctors had given up on you, but God brought you through anyway with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm. In other cases, they thought you were going to lose your mind. Some folk knew that the stuff that you have gone through, you ought to be sitting up in a chair somewhere just going cuckoo for Cocoa Puff. But God brought you out, and God brought you through. So instead of focusing on all the negative stuff and the stuff that you've been through and the pain that you've encountered, focus your eyes on him. You've got to let it go because you cannot move forward while you are still looking backwards. How many of you that athletes that are engaged in a race, they lose their pace when they start trying to look back to see where the next person is? So they know they have to keep their eyes on the prize. Lot's wife. 
she turned into a pillar of salt. Why? Because she was looking back. How many people here want to turn into a pillar of salt? How many people want to wander around in the wilderness for 40 years? If you don't want to wander around in the wilderness for 40 years, if you don't want to turn into a pillar of salt, but instead, if you want to see the blessings and the power of God manifest in your life, then get yourself in line with the word of God. Do what God says to do. Trust him. Somebody wrote a song and said it is so sweet to trust in Jesus and just to take him at his word. How many of you know that he is a way maker? He'll make a way out of no way. He is a deliverer. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. Hallelujah. He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. There's none like him because why? He's the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what you've encountered. Hallelujah. But it really doesn't matter as long as you keep your eyes planted on him because he won't lead you. He won't abandon you. He's right there with you. You thought you were all alone, but you're not all alone. He's carrying you. When you get down in the dumps and you don't know how to make your way out, God is carrying you. He's carrying you. He's taking you from one level to the next level. And you're going to come out at this thing uh, as pure gold. You're going to come out spotless. Uh, isn't that what happened to Joseph? Y'all remember the story of Joseph as I take my seat. Uh, Joseph's brother sold him into slavery. Joseph got down doing the best he could do and the Potiphar wife lied on him. Said the man tried to rape me. Joseph was thrown down into the maximum security prison. Hallelujah. But the Bible says in the middle of all that stuff that was going on, the Lord was with him. How many of you know that the Lord is with you? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him all he freely give us all things? Hallelujah. And so Joseph found himself in the maximum security prison. But the Lord was with Joseph. And so what happened? One day Joseph was woken, woken out of his sleep and said, we got to get you cleaned up and get you ready. Hallelujah, because the Pharaoh has an appointment with you. He's had this issue. And that's why you need to nurture your, your dreams. And that's why you need to nurture your gifts. Some of you have given up on your gifts and given up on the things that God has promised you. But you cannot give up on the blessing of God. So Joseph, down there, and God brought him up out of the prison and stood him before Pharaoh and made him the prime minister of all of Egypt. Now you would think that at, the t at that time when there was a famine, y'all know the story, his brother, the same brothers who sold him into slavery came back and needed him to feed them. He recognized them, but they did not recognize him. Now he had every opportunity. He had every opportunity to get them back. You know how some of y'all been plotting for 15 years on how y'all gonna get that person back? Some of y'all been plotting for 20 years on what you're going to say to them. You know exactly what you're going to say to them next time you see them. Joseph let all that stuff go. Hallelujah. Because Joseph recognized that God hallelujah, will take care of my adversary. I cannot allow myself to lose my blessing, lose my anointing, lose the promises of God, lose the will of God for my life in order to come down and descend to somebody else's level who can't do nothing for me. Come on and stand to your feet. Let's give God praise. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and bless. Come on and bless. Hallelujah. I want you to let it go in the name of Jesus. You know what it is you need to let go of. Sweep it under the carpet or vacuum it up with the vacuum cleaner. It's better to vacuum up with the black vacuum cleaner than throw the bag away than to sweep it under the carpet. Let it go. It's not worth what it costs you.